Alright guys, welcome back to a long overdue indie showcase. <laughs> uh, I'm your host, Marvin Get It, and I'm here to review uh, the indie titles that I have been reading. Um, I have been so behind on my indie readings, my indie books, as well as my Marvel books, but I've been getting out my DC for some time now. I put up a few DC uh, reviews and I know a lot of people wanted to see that so I did um, once again this is Indie Showcase where I review independent comics from the highest of highs to the lowest independent companies and everything all around and um, like I said before guys I have been uh, a little bit behind so bear with me with these reviews I will I'm gonna get them out as soon as I can I don't want to rush anything but even with that guys i got um i've broken up a lot of my my indie books into 12 stacks each so basically like 12 books to 10 books um when i review these guys they were going to be in company order so if basically alphabetical order basically so we got one from boom we got a few dynamite comics we got uh, IDW, we got some Image in here, we got Mad Cave, and we're going to end it with Udon Comics. So, uh, let's let's kick this off. So, first off, we're going to start off with Boom Studios, and the Boom Studio book is Power Rangers Prime. Uh, this is uh, Melissa Flores, uh, Michael Ying, and uh, Fabi Marquez. Uh, on the book. So basically what this seems to be is that they uh, with this new uh, this new Power Rangers book they have kind of taken a little bit of of a influence from the ultimate universe. So this is kind of like an ultimate universe of of now the Power Rangers. In this we see that Earth in this book, Earth has been colonized by an alien race. Um, uh, I'm not going to spoil the race's name, but they have Earth is now under this this uh, aliens uh, colonization. So they're colonizers, uh, and I think Earth is their 205th colonized planet. Uh, Power Rangers have been kind of been exiled or in a sense been hunted down by this alien race in a sense and we get one of them here who is who is a descendant of the Power Rangers one of them her name is Laura uh, uh, she she boo she bo she bo yeah Laura she and she looks like she's almost a power a member of the the Power Rangers Samurai, because she, when she pulls it out, she even says, you know, energized Samurai, and, and but she gets shot. Um, it's really interesting to see how they play this off, this world off. Now, little do we know, somebody is narrating this and been watching. And a lot of people, we have people from, from other planets, like refugees that lost their planet, and they're, they're not really, they, they feel like it's not fair. Like, life is not as good as they make it out to be. Because um, you got a refugee and then you got a colonizer that's like, you, well, your, your race colonized this planet because Earth got attacked by an alien race and and that's how they played off. Earth got attacked and Earth was not ready for an alien invasion. there, And so this alien race pretty much gave them technology that gave them a little bit of... Um, advance but the power Rangers was doing that before them and then all of a sudden it's almost like well we can't have you we can't have you in defending what that's that's our job so it's it's almost like that and they've been killing off uh rangers and families and things like that and so uh we see that this is the one ranger we do see here uh she's a red ranger uh, and it's female uh and Outside of that, it ends with uh, a certain somebody 
a new version of her coming, and I'm just like, I know who that is, but it it was it was cool to see. I'm not gonna spoil. Y'all should already know if you haven't seen it. This was good. This was a good start. I, I when I saw this, I was like, you know, I want to get back into the Power Rangers comics because uh, I kind of fell off of it after um, I think Kyle Higgins after he left. I kind of fell off of it. So, but that was good. I I really enjoyed that. I'm I'm gonna keep keep reading that. I will move on to Dynamite, and I got. There's three Dynamite books in here. Like I said, guys, I am behind. So forgive me if you read it. I'm behind, just to let you guys know. And what we are on is the fifth issue of Space Ghost. Uh, David uh, uh, Peppas and Jonathan Wong uh, Lao. Um, Jonathan Lao's artwork is always great. Uh, this, he's been on Dynamite books forever. And just doing covers and it's just great to see in this pretty much we get space ghost versus zorak and um zorak is kind of like he's kind of like this sick prophet in this they they twisted his logic a little bit in this and but what what really is is zorak has jan and jace he has they have jan and jace and he's he's basically saying if you don't do this for me space ghost then I will kill the children. I will kill Jan and Jace. And Jan and Jace are like, don't do it, Space goes Like, don't, don't help him. We we knew the risk when we signed up with you. Like, they're they're like soldiers now. They're like, you know, we we don't we're not gonna. And you know, uh, unfortunately, Space Ghost does because he cares. He he's he doesn't want to risk the kid's life. And little bleep comes in and helps and gets the kids free. But over time, it's a battle. And in the process of the stopping Zorak's plan, Jace shoots Zorak. And it pretty much ends with him feeling bad about it. He feels, he's like, I don't know how to feel about this. Like, and they're trying to tell him it's not your fault. Like, you know, you had no choice, but he feels like he's not up to this. And he literally takes his mask off and, and walks away. He's like, I can't do this. Because he doesn't feel that way. And that was a really interesting way to end it. But uh, the next issue will be with uh, Moltar. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that as well. But I've been loving the Space Ghost series. Uh, it's been just really fun. Uh, if you're a Space Ghost fan, yeah, you'll, you'll like that. We'll move on to issue number one of uh, the Terminator, uh, Terminator comic by... Uh, uh, Shively, same person that's writing the Thundercats comic. Um, so th does this have Sarah Connor in it? No, it doesn't. Uh, first issue, I'll let you straight. Let me let me get that straight off. There is no Sarah Connor in this. No, no, no John Connor. None of that. But there is a couple in here, which I believe will probably play were supposed to play a purpose in the in the war. Um, there is a Terminator that comes after them, started chasing them back in 1979. They were able to escape it, uh, escape it and lay low up in Canada, uh, not in Canada, up in Alaska. But eventually uh, the Terminator, this Terminator actually catches up with them. Uh, no, it does not look like Arnold, so I'm going to let you know right now. No, it doesn't look like the T-800. Uh, so no, uh, but it does catch up with them, and unfortunately, it ends badly. Um, it's really sad. It's it, it's not a good ending. It's you know, you got they're older now because when they were first being chased in '79, they were younger, but now they're older. So a lot of things they're they're like for example, there's one part where um, the the Terminator buses in their cabin, and the um, um, the, the one of the man, his name is Jonathan, I believe. Um, he's right at the door with a shotgun. Now he's older, so when he shoots that gun, it the kickback boom shoots him so and he breaks his wrist. I was like, oh man, you know, he's trying to tell his wife to get out of here, get out of here, make sure you, you know, burn all the evidence, any kind of evidence to track down. And it's really sad. It's like, ah, oh, you thought they would get away, but they didn't. But it, it was still, it was, I enjoyed this very much, um, and very much indeed, and makes me wonder where they're going to go with this, uh, because it doesn't seem like they're, 
They're, they're, it seems like this book is going the way, um, I hate to say it, but the way Terminator 3 went when they were killing off John Connor's, uh, his soldiers, his, his people that were going to be with him in the war, his lieutenants. Kind of feels like they're going that way with it, but it was fun. And we move on to uh, the it, the sixth issue of Thundercats. Uh, like I said, uh, Declan uh, Shavely, Drew Moss. Um, this is focused all on Panthro, and Panthro uh, feels a little bit jaded. He feels a little bit, you know, like he, he know he messed up from the previous five issues, you know, and then of course him being challenged by Chitara. Uh, in a, a fight for honor, but because he questioned uh, Lionel's judgment in certain things, and Chitara beat him. Um, but he also shows that he does love Lionel. He, he loves Lionel very much. And after a couple of things that have happened previously, if you haven't read it, I'm not going to spoil it. Um, everything seems to go a little weird. Now we bring up Thundranium in this because. We see the the Thunder Tank. The Thunder Tank is a big uh, is big in this, and I must say I was not feeling the this new design of the Thunder Tank. It's got a tail. I'm like, what the, what the hell is that thing? I was like, what is that? I was like, is that a tail? I was like, oh. But then I didn't see it at one point. It was there, and then the rest of it wasn't there. But pretty much, it's Lion is Panthro looking for more Thundranium, you know, for for their their technology. Because you all know that, and then if you don't know, you should know. And he is attacked by vulture men. Yeah, vulture men attack him. And he is... But while I'm reading this, this just shows how big of a... How much of a 80s brat I am, and how much I always loved the original series. Uh, when I'm reading this, all I hear is Panthro's theme. Remember, in the original series, every Thundercat had their own theme. So all I heard was and I was just I was just hearing it. So it was really cool to see that. And uh Snarf helps Panthro in this as well. So it seems that Panthro is uh, he 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 can communicate telepathically with them. So he's not a talker like 80s version like Snarf for Snarf and all that. Uncle Oswald, sorry, that's his real name, that's Snarf's real name, but here it's a little different, but I love that, you know, Panthro is able to deal with all the Vulture Men and the mutants and all the Vulture Men's people, and you see Vulture Man at the end, and he's, he's he looks a little different, but he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna take your technology, because Pan Vulture Man is also like a, a, a engineer as well, so it was, this was all focused on, um, all focused on uh, uh, Panthro. It was it was good though, very good. Uh, we move on to. I know a lot of people wanted to hear me talk about this. Like I said, I'm sorry to be late to the party or not to get my reviews out. But like I said, I'm so backed up on indie books. But um, first issue of Jason Aaron's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, number one. This was different, very different, but. In a good way. Um, Raph is in San Quentin. San Quentin. That's out in California. He's in a... He's in there. And you see Raph just talking about how... You know, everything. Everybody looks at me. Everybody... You know, I hear the whispers. Blah, 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 blah. Everything like that. But then we realize... But it's never really said why he's in jail. You know... And then all of a sudden, he, we start to see people trying to escape from Sam Quentin. And Raph is down in the sewer system, and he, he stops these guys from... And then we see the warden, and the warden comes over and says, you know, I thought you were supposed to tell me when this happens, and, you know, it's corrupt down there. And so we kind of get an indication that Raph is not in here on just some kind of random situation. He's in this because he's trying to figure it out and then also then we get more into it that yeah then also ninja show up and Raph is like I thought with Karai taking over 
you know, they would kind of stop doing this. But he, he realized, he, he even calls out, he's like, he's like, I'm Raphael from the, uh, the Yoshi clan. Like, he, he basically even says that. And he says, who is your Jonin? And they won't talk. And he's like, okay, the more I'm, I'm fighting and the more I can feel like they are from the Foot clan. And what happens is Raph gets set up because the warden of the jail is killed by size. And when people come in to see that, they, they instantly think Raph did it. Now what's going on in New York is we see that there's corruption all over again, but in the terms of politicians running for mayor. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> but uh, it was good. And we do see Raph escape or he leaves again. And he says, I'm coming, bros, wherever you are. And this was good. This was a really good start. Uh, the next issue is focused on Mikey. I was shocked that it was going to Mikey first because, you know, Mikey's my favorite turtle. Uh, but, yeah, uh, this this was good. This was real good indeed. Uh, enjoyed it very much. Uh, good, start, good start, Mr. Aaron. We move on to the first issue of Joshua Williams and Tom Riley and Jordy uh, Belair's G.I. Joe. Uh, first of all, I had to get that David Finch cover. I know it's got Cobra on it, but I love David Finch. I, I'm, I honestly could say I'm somewhat friends of the family because uh, I know uh, um, his wife, David. I know David's wife more than him. I, we talk all the time as much as we can through social media. But um, this was a good start. This was a good start. And it also kind of gives us a kind of a understanding of why certain things. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So pretty much in this, we see that Duke is has a team. Uh, Cover Girl is on his team. There's a... Uh, I, don't wanna, I, I don't wanna butcher all the names. Cause some of these, I'm trying to remember. I'm like, who's that? I don't know that guy. And Baroness is on the team. Remember, and this Baroness, she left. She's not a part of. She's not a part of Cobra in this. So we have, like I said, Duke, Cover Girl, Baroness, Stalker, uh, Rock and Roll, Clutch, and like I said, and that's his team. And they're just training. And even in this, Duke is telling his superiors, like, "We're not ready. We're not ready." And it even gets more understanding when we see what's going on with Cobra, uh, with uh, Cobra Commander. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I'm a big kid. I told, like, yeah. See, so guys, like that just shows I'm a big '80s brat right there. Like, I sounded like Destro from the original Cobra Commander. Like he, my you know, and so Destro in this. They're in Springfield, and they already, their technology, their weaponry is highly advanced than theirs. And, for example, like, their weaponry shoots lasers. And I'm like, I see what you're doing there, Mr. Williams. And I'm like, okay, so now you're basically, we're, we're supposed to understand why now the Joes shoot lasers. It comes from Energon. So they are playing up because this is in the Energon universe and they talk about it. So the Joes, their first mission is to uh, protect uh, uh, protect this, looks like it's from, you know, the Cybertronians. And um, unfortunately, the mission does not go fairly as well. Um, the Joes are just outclassed. They're outclassed, they're outmatched, they're outgunned. And th there are some casualties in this on Duke's team. And it makes me wonder, were these just, these, the ones that died, were they just used because we're, we're going to get the, the, some of the real Joes involved. But um, this was a good start, a very good, very good issue. I really enjoyed it very much. And um, I'm looking forward to reading more of uh, Josh Williamson's uh, G.I. Joe. This was good. This was real good. As it... Like I said, I'm an 80s brat, so of course, you know, G.I. Joe is going to be right up there with me, and uh, I did enjoy this. 
I am still looking forward to reading um, uh, uh, the the Scarlet miniseries. I'm a, when that come out on trade, I'm gonna read that. And we move on to the first issue of the reboot of Witchblade. Mind you, now guys, this is Image. Now, guys, when it came to independent comics, when it came to, you know, the Image universe or, or Top Cow universe, you know, whatever you want to call it, Witchblade was my favorite. Sarah Pazzini was my favorite. You know, it wasn't it wasn't Spawn. It was it was it was Witchblade, and we got the lovely and talented Marjorie Bennett, no relation, uh, on the writing. She is leading this new char. I love the original series, and so I was wondering if they were going to bring Witchblade, and I'm glad they brought it back. Hopefully, with Witchblade, we may see a darkness come back too. But this is just a, a really good retelling, retelling, retooling, telling of the origin and this the witchblade is a little different it it's not the same as it was in the original series um but it still focuses on women like women can only we women can only use it and more importantly um sarah is still she she's a cop in this she's still a cop she's but she's still looking for she tells the story of like you know her father was killed by by people that he thought he could trust. There was corruption in his unit and they, they killed him. Um, and she's still looking to get justice for her father. Uh, we do see some things like Sarah in this, because I can't remember too fondly if Sarah was in the military in the original, in the original series. I don't, I can't remember. But in, the, in this series, before she became a cop, she was in, she was, she was part of a special, she was a, she was on a black ops team um, and, uh, she talks about it, she's like, there's some, I left after I was 24, I signed up when I was 18, I left when I was 24, there was some things I just couldn't get over, like, she's shell-shocked, she's got, uh, PTSD, yeah, it's, all that stuff's in this, um, but she's still doing her job as a police officer, and we see, that, we see that, she's a detective, I keep saying police officer, uh, but we see her with her partner, who she talks about, I can trust I can trust Yen, I can trust you, um, but, and we're seeing the Witchblade, and Kenneth Irons, who is a big name, he's tracking it, the Witchblade is literally trying to find its wielder, trying to find Sarah, it's literally attaching himself, itself to a, every woman until it gets on a plane, the woman, that, this woman that was going to New York, gets on and attaches itself, then it goes to this way, it, it's, it's they really kind of make it more symbiotic in this but it was still cool i was really liking that and when sarah's cover is blown in a case because um if it, it attaches it finds sarah and attaches it, and then she uh does what she does and yeah the the, the it's different now compared to like, right now from that book that you see right there the original book so it's it's uh it's less less revealing and not too much revealing in in that one compared to what I just showed you. And I'm fine with that. I have nothing against that at all. Uh but Marjorie Bennett does a great job writing this. This was great. I really enjoyed this and I'm a Witchblade fan. I'm all, I always will love Sarah Pazzini. And uh it was it was great. The artwork in this was really good too. Shouts out to uh uh, Kaferi, I, I think I'm saying his name right, uh, but it was it was great, it was good. Uh, can't wait to review more. Like I said, when I get, I'm still catching up, guys. Um, now we move on to Mad Cave, and uh, the first issue we're gonna go with the the first comic of Mad Cave. Uh, we're going with issue number three of Dick Tracy. Uh, reviewed the first. Uh, back um, congratulations shouts out to Mad K for 10, 10 years 10, 10, an 10 year anniversary celebration um, this is still continuing the trail of Tracy is on the trail of who is gunning down he knows there's a war coming 
He knows something is going on there. Players involved, people that you know he 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 he's looking into. He and his he and Pat right here, and of course Tess. You know, they all know that some they're like a team now because they're on the same case. Um, we get shoulders. We get we get a real interesting. We get Itchy. He's in this issue. We we also get um, an interesting backstory on um, not just Lips because they showed Lips before. They do know Lips Manus is involved in this, but there's a big issue. There's a big backstory on Prune Face in this. They bring up Prune Face like because they really go into deep. Like okay, this is a period piece and. Pruneface was in the war. He was, they, and the only war I can think of that this is probably focusing on is World War One. Um, so they're like, okay, yeah, he was in the war and he betrayed his whole unit, and the the scars on his face is from he got burnt. These are just burnt scars all over his face. And I'm like, okay, that makes some sense in why his face, why he's called Pruneface, because so it it was really good to see, and if you see the silhouette of Flat Top, Flat Top is in this and he is kind of going around murdering people every time Tracy and and his gang get closer they they're like two steps ahead somebody is leaking information and that's why they're, they're like okay how are they how is somebody knowing about this so eventually we kind of see that Tracy goes to the chief and he's like chief something's not right this case is not solved this case is not over something is not right we are the we're, there's like a new player involved like we're always dead and so he he starts to question it and they're like we're not getting off this case we're not getting off this case and I think Tracy is maybe starting to suspect somebody higher up in the police is working for who probably is big boy uh, uh, big boss uh, but um, this this was fun I've been loving this. Uh, Seguero and, and Maurice, they, they're doing a good job with this retelling of Dick Tracy. I'm really liking that. And we move on to uh, Cullen Bunn, Gachaman number two. Uh, Gachaman number two. So last time we left off, the team was in dire straits as they were being about to be sucked in to this giant tentacle monster and they they're really trying to figure out okay what do we do how do we get out of here because they're in the ship so they they turn on they use their phoenix the phoenix power remember and they were able to escape little do they know that <clears throat> excuse me little do they know that the people that they're that someone has infiltrated the Lodians have infiltrated because they have someone else involved and it gets really tricky for there. It becomes like a more who did it, who who done it, but she's a like a master of disguise. And we kind of see that not everything is exactly what it seems to be. But it was good. It was good indeed. Um, you know, Gachaman or Battle of the Planets, G Force, whatever you want to call them. I mean, there's so many different names for them. But um, you know, they they've been around for years, and it's really cool to see them get the spotlight again you know you know before power rangers you know there was you know them and last but not least we ended on udon comics udon and what is the book final fight <laughs> number one matt uh moylan moylan and matthew weldon do the artwork uh the artwork by mr uh, weldon was great this was this was beautiful uh, so what is this? Uh, well, first of all, I can tell you right now, when I was reading this comic, and I was reading this, what did I, what did I, what did, what music did I hear reading? All I heard was, that's all I heard was the, the Final Fight music. And all this is, really, is a adaptation of the game. That's all. You know, Hagar, Mike Hagar, who is the mayor and former pro wrestler, uh, 
his 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 daughter Jessica gets kidnapped, who is the childhood high school sweetheart and girlfriend of Cody, and 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 of course they both friend Guy. They all help their friend track down the Mad Gear Gang, and you're just seeing every like the characters, and I'm like, oh my god, this is just it, you know. Um, it was really fun. It was just you see Poison, she's in here, or I don't know if they still are considering because. Uh, Poison in the original, I remember being, it, it, that was a, a um, she was trans, she was trans, but I don't know if they have done that now in this book, they're just saying that it, it's a woman, uh, but still, it's it just great to see her, all we were missing was Hugo, I was like, where's Hugo, I was looking for Hugo, I'm like, where's Hugo, and it just plays out like the game, like, you're seeing them travel through the streets of 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 um of uh why am I forgetting the city? Uh shit. What well, um how did I forget Metro City? There we go. Metro City. Uh and it, it takes place in the eighties. It says eighteen uh it's a, it says nineteen eighty eight or a city that just feels like it's stuck there. I was like <coughs> okay that's funny. So it's not saying that it's modern. It's saying it's taking place there. And then we see Hagar fighting the um, the one of the mag you know the the with the dreadlocks, he goes. Ah, remember him with the glasses. Remember y'all, y'all. See y'all, y'all probably y'all too young. Y'all probably don't know that. But yeah, he's he's got Jessica, and then Jessica gets somewhere else, and they fall through it, and they're in the they're in the subway, and I'm like, this is playing out just like the game. And Co Cody and Guy gotta track the subway car. It's the it was it's just like this is the and it ends with that where Hagar's on the train, and you know the leader of the Mag Gear Gang is saying, hey, you know. Just let us do what we want to do, and you know we'll give you some on the side. You know it's just it was good. This was just fun, and I'm looking forward to reading issue two. I do have issue two. I will review issue two uh, later on. But there you have it, guys. Those are uh, some of uh, the indie books that I am reading. Um, like I said, guys, please forgive me for uh, being a little late to the party with a lot of books. Um, I'm trying to play catch up as soon as much as I can. I don't want to. I'm not going to just rush things out. Like I said, I'm so behind on my independent books. I'm so behind on my um, my Marvel bo books, single issues I'm talking about. I got some trades that I want to review as well. So, yes. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have read any of these books, please tell me in the comment section down below. I love to hear what you guys think. And I will see you guys next time on Indie Showcase. As always, deuces.